<clears throat> let me fix the music to start. There we go. And are you going to play the other music? I still got to fix the music. I got to work on this automation thing. All right, let's. Uh... Oh, no, it is. It is gone. It's just really loud. Let's turn the music down a little bit, shall we? There we go. Hello. How's it going? I'm Ian Douglas. I'm the author of the website Tech Interview Guide. Um, I'm here to help people get better at tech industry interviews because interviews suck. And I know that from experience because I've been there. I've been in the industry for 25 years. I've been a hiring manager. I know they suck. I'm also going through a job hunt right now. It sucks. Even when you got lots of experience, it's a horrible thing to go through. But hope everybody's doing well. Um, it's cold in my basement. So I decided it was beanie night. And uh, what better beanie than to pull out an old Python cap uh, that I got at PyCon a number of years ago. Um, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to the stream. Um, handful of things that you see down here. Um, say hi in chat. If you're there, say hello. Right now, do it. Say hi. Well, type hi. I, I can't hear you when you say it. But I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, shout out to 3D Print Fan. Thanks for the follow. Um, and everybody else that's followed uh, over the past week. Uh, Tizzy Matic, Taiwanese Name, Andreas TX, Pizza in the Oven, Trash Dev, uh, which is Chris. Uh, good to see Trash on there. Uh, I've been following his, uh, his stream lately. He's been doing a lot of stuff around tech interview uh, salaries and, and uh, helping people also with resume reviews and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, lots of, uh, lots of followers actually over the past week or so. Um, and I'm actually going to show tonight, I'm going to show a bit of a redesign of something that I've been working on with stream elements, uh, to kind of reposition the windows and things like that, um, for this coming Thursday. So my buddy Josh decided he was going to be on the stream with me. And so I'm super excited about that. So this Thursday, December 2nd. Josh Ashton, a uh, guy that I worked with at SendGrid for a number of years, for actually all four years I was there. He was like the head of the HR team. And he's going to come on the stream. We're going to do some resume reviews. And it's just going to be like rapid fire. Like, what do you think of this resume? What do you think of this resume? And he's basically going to figure out which resumes he should pass along to me as a hiring manager. And then I'm going to look at them and decide which of these are worth me saying, yes, let's call this person. Let's call that person. Um, just to kind of get it a take on how does an HR person look at a resume and how does a technical hiring manager look at a resume? And those are gonna be some pretty key uh, sorts of differences as far as what he would look for and what I would look for in a resume. And we'll talk about those differences. I think a lot of that's uh, kind of a smart thing to kind of help all of you with. So those of you that are job hunting, that you're going through the process right now, Although it's end of the quarter, it's end of the year. A lot of people think that hiring is slowing down. It's not. People are still hiring right now. Um, I'm hearing all the time of like people getting jobs like this week already. Um, I know it's Sunday, but like, you know, in the past week, over Thanksgiving week, people are still reporting that they signed job offers and so on. So people are hiring. Um, don't believe for a second that hiring slows down just because holidays are there. Um, I'm hoping for a job offer myself, maybe over the next week or two. If you're watching please give me a job offer. Um, there are a handful of places I would really, really, really like to go work. One of them especially. And they sometimes like watch the stream. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, big shout out to all my friends that are at reInvent this week. I uh, wish I could be there. Um, just didn't work out uh, timing wise to, to go. But uh, I would have loved to be there. Um, I think it's going to be a fantastic thing. Uh, plus, I would have loved to just get away and go to Vegas where it's slightly warmer than it is here in Colorado right now. Um, got the little space heater going down here. Um, let's see what else is going on. So Thursday is going to be a whole bunch of resume reviews and Thursday is also going to be my December giveaway. Um, and so I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and that's also going to be the panel that I'm going to switch over to and we're actually going to test out the giveaway. Uh, as soon as some people show up in chat and say, hi, I'm here. I know you're watching. I can see that you're hanging out, just none of you are talking. Um, but uh, let me know that you're there in chat and we'll test the giveaway and uh, at least the mechanism of it. I'm not actually, not actually gonna do a giveaway tonight. I just wanna test the mechanism and how it works so that when we get to Thursday, I can actually do the thing. I think that that'll be a lot of fun. 
Um, so we'll test that out. And then aside from that, um, I'm really hoping to get into more live coding really soon. Um, I've got a technical presentation I need to do on Tuesday for a job interview. And that technical presentation is going to be doing some live coding. I won't be able to stream that while I'm doing it. I wish I could. I wish that, I, I really wish that there was a way that I could actually go do these interviews and stream being at the interview so that you can all see what it's like to go through an actual tech interview, like a real legit tech interview. Um, and how even someone with a lot of experience will fumble and make mistakes and say, um, like a billion times, which I know I already do on the stream too. But I'm really hoping that uh, these last couple of rounds of interviews are going to go really well. I've got uh, one more for one company that I really, really want to go work at. Um, I'm waiting to find out from Amazon about an AWS instructor role over there. Um, I did my presentation for them last week, which is basically teaching a class. And if that goes well, then I actually get invited to the final round of like the leadership principles interview. And apparently that one's really hard. It's uh, just a ton of behavioral questions, but you basically have to prove to them that you are like Amazonian enough to actually go work at Amazon. Um, and so I'm like studying like crazy and like writing down all kinds of like star method uh, stories and things like that. Because apparently over like four or five hours worth of interviews, you're only allowed to repeat an example two times total. Um, and so I can't say, oh, I worked on this project and then say I worked on that project in another answer. I can, I only get to talk about that project twice over five hours. I'm like, I gotta like come up with some really, really long explanations, I think, for what I did on some of these projects. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how that plays out. Um, and then I've got another round with Twilio on Tuesday. Yeah, that's the coding one that I have to do on Tuesday. Um, where I'm actually doing like live coding as if I was at a tech conference doing a doing a like a uh, 45 minute talk. That one's gonna be pretty fun. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the Python script that I wrote to split up my question and answer videos into smaller segments and uh, just walk them through like how I wrote that code. But I'm actually gonna like talk about this was the problem space and this is how I solved it and this is the library that I use and blah 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 and then then actually like live code how to do that and then actually run the code. Hopefully that that's going to work out okay. Last time I did a technical presentation for SendGrid, I had to do it at a technical conference where the internet was a little shaky. There were 700 people in attendance and I got up and I'm like, all right, I'm going to live code and this requires internet and like zero people disconnected off the network for me. And uh, so my, my live coding didn't work out so well, uh, but that's okay. It was a lot of fun anyway. Um, and, and taught me some humility <laughs> in front of 700 people. Um, but it was great. It was up in Canada and Canadians are always super forgiving. And I was, I'm, I'm one. So, you know, they were, they were extra forgiving, but it was, it was still awkward, but still great. Um, so I got that on Tuesday. I'm hoping to do, well, I'm hoping to hear back from Amazon about doing their final round. Uh, but the one that I, I don't want to say the name cause I don't want to jinx it. But it's the one I really, 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 really want that job. Um, and I'm waiting to find out about like last steps there. So we'll see. Handful of startups trying to get my attention. Uh, a bunch of them actually reached out like Wednesday last week going, hey, we'd love to talk to you about like starting this or that kind of initiative. Um, and so that'll be interesting. One of them is not really a startup. Uh, they're like two or 300 people and they want to talk to me about uh, taking on kind of a leadership role. That'd be interesting. So lots of lots of things in the work works. Um, Finished. It finished. One of my 3D prints finished. So I'm going to go grab something off the 3D printer. I'll be right back. Y'all. I don't say y'all lightly, but yo. This turned out amazing. This turned out really, really, really cool. This is, this is one of those dragon models, but it's in this red and gold filament. The camera does not do it justice. This thing looks absolutely exquisite. It's got a little strand of filament here on the horn there. But this thing looks so nice, everybody. 
like so beautiful. Um, the filament that I'm using is called, uh, it's from a company called Amelin. I've used their filament in the past, um, but this is the first time I've tried their color transition filaments and it looks just amazing. It looks really, really cool. This red and gold is, is pretty great. So 3D print, you get this cool like cracking sound. I don't know whether my mic will pick it up or not because usually my mic filters all the kind of stuff out. But you just like bend this steel plate and Mr. Dragon just kind of pops off. Honest, he, he just kind of pops off. All right, there we go. Set that over to the side. And here's our articulated dragon. So basically how it works is the there's a little hinge inside each of these segments and it printed flat that you can see. And it basically, um, as it prints layer by layer and gets taller and taller, it basically builds a hinge in each of these segments where there's like a post and then a thing like wraps around it. Um, and so it's just like 3D printing the post and it's printing the ring at the same time and then it like fully encloses so it can't come apart. Um, and then you get these really cool kinds of effects. So there's like a little hinge on all the legs and then a hinge on all of these segments. I haven't even counted the segments, but there's probably 40 or more segments to this thing. And it's just fantastic. This red and gold looks amazing. So it's like burgundy on the bottom, transitioned into a gold and went back to the burgundy by the time it got to the little tips of the spikes on the scales and it just looks fantastic. Um, so this red and gold dragon uh, will, well, this one in particular will not be part of the giveaway. The one that's on this printer right now is going to be part of the giveaway. And it looks, it's gonna look something like this one. This is another one of the Amelin uh, filaments, but it's basically a gold brown and then like a really dark brown, almost a black charcoal sort of color. And this one came out just astounding. Like I'm just shocked at the quality of this filament and just the, the subtle transition in color that happens. I'm going to hold it up to the camera, but I, I promise you the camera does not do justice to what's going on here in this filament. But it looks really, really amazing. And then just the fact that the horns ended up in the lighter color, it just blows my mind. Um, so I've got these two that are really, really large. And then I printed a whole bunch slightly smaller. So this is a smaller version of the red and the gold. And we can see it actually started more on the gold on the bottom, transitioned to red, and then went back to gold by the time it got to the spikes. And so that's just the nature of the filament. It's going to be kind of random as far as like where it starts and stops. And so no two dragons that I print with that filament are ever going to be exactly the same. Size-wise, um, just to show you like the size of the heads. So this is the, the giant one, and this is the kind of the normal one. It's a fair bit smaller. This one's about 30% bigger. In fact, it's exactly 30% bigger. Um, and if we look at the length of the tails, it's much longer, it's 30% longer. Um, but these smaller ones, like the, just the amount of detail on here is fantastic. Um, and so anyway, my 3D giveaway is gonna be a whole bunch of these dragons. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six of them going right now. And so, we're gonna we're gonna give away a bunch of these things. Um, I'm gonna keep these two really big ones. I've got a really big one that's uh, printing right now. It's got maybe two hours left in this really nice dark blue sparkly filament, which looks really fantastic too. Um, but it's gonna be just the dragon. All the other ones that I printed in the different colors, and I'll show you some of those other colors. Um, I also printed these little models. There's, let's see, there's a horse. And again, just little hinges and stuff inside. And so we call it articulated. So it's an articulated horse. And then they put wings on it and made a Pegasus. And then they put a horn on it instead and made a unicorn. And then they put a horn and wings on it and made a Pegasus unicorn. And so for each of the colors that I printed the smaller dragon, I also printed a set of the four horses, not quite the four horsemen of the apocalypse, 
but there are four horses with each dragon. And so originally my thought was, well, I'll just give you the whole set of horses with the same color dragon. And then I thought, well, I've printed five sets already. I'm just going to give you one dragon and then one of each of these in all of the other colors. Well, I want to show you what some of these other colors are. I showed you the color changing one. So it looks like kind of a, a grayish green, like almost like a like the fake Christmas tree green uh, for like artificial trees that you'd see. But as you hold it, it'll get pink. And as it gets hot, it turns yellow. I got a set of that. And then there's this rainbow filament that I used where it transitions. So very similar to the red and the gold or the, uh, the three color like burgundy brown uh, charcoal kind of color uh, for the other dragon. Um, but these are more rainbow color. And so the, the transitions aren't as subtle as you can see. It, it makes a pretty, pretty broad stripe on there. Um, but I printed several of those. And so you can see from one to the next that the transitions are never the same. They're close, but they're never going to be exactly the same. And so I've got a couple of sets of the rainbow. I've got a set of the horses in the fire, like red, orange, gold uh, blend. And then I've got a bunch in that black silk. And then I've got a bunch in the in the color changing filament. Um, and then the one that I'm printing over here now is in that same dark uh, charcoal kind of color that the other big dragon is. But um, just the... Uh, like where it started and where it ended is very different. So on this one, it started on the gold and transitioned up to black by the time it got to the spikes. And then it just happened that the horns went back to the gold uh, that we had on the bottom of this dragon. Um, the one that's printing over there now, it actually started closer to the burgundy kind of color. And so the feet are kind of burgundy. And then most of the body is going to be kind of the charcoal black, but then the tips of the horns are going to be back to that gold color. And so we'll end up with like a transition to gold, uh, gold tips on the horns or on the, uh, on the spikes on the back. It's going to look pretty, pretty neat. Um, and so I've got that set printing with a set of horses as well. And so at the end of all of this, I'm going to have six sets of dragons and horses to give away. And that's going to be the giveaway on Thursday. Um, so if you're in chat, say hello. Let me know you're there because I do want to test out the giveaway thing at some point uh tonight while i have some people on the uh on the chat so if you're there say hi and uh and we'll go from there um let's see what else is going on i do want to get in some live coding um i know i've been saying that for a while but um i'm really hoping that the live coding thing is going to happen sooner than later um and i'm going to start doing it during the daytime i think my job at stream is going to wrap up this week um and so probably like wednesday thursday friday i'm hoping to do um some live coding during the day. I may do some interview prep during the day. We'll see. I've got a stray hair somewhere on my hat. There it is. There. Um, I want to do some interview prep stuff during the daytime. I'm not always sure that this evening time is the best. Um, I mean, if you're watching this on YouTube later, then hi, how's it going? Like and subscribe, all that stuff. Um, but for live viewers, I'm not sure that this 7 p.m. time segment is working out very well. Um, I mean, it, it ranges. Some days I get, you know, 10 people on the, on the stream. Some people, some days I get like a hundred. Um, and tonight apparently nobody, but that's okay. I'm still here to stream. I'm still here to help people out and I'm still going to go through a little bit of Q and A, uh, towards the end of the stream. But um, I do want to get in some live coding during the day and just kind of talk about like some of the side projects that I want to work on and how I'm keeping my own skills sharp and kind of um, I had a really good conversation this morning with a guy named George. Uh, we took our dogs out to dog park and we got talking about like career kind of thing. And he's like, you've been doing this a long time. What do you want to do like until you retire? When are you going to retire? How long are you going to stay in tech? I'm like, I'm going to stay in tech as long as I can. And I've been actually putting a lot of thought into where I want to sort of take my career next. Like I, you know, I'm, I'm interviewing for all these developer relations roles because that's really what I want to do. I want to work in community and I want to build up community around me and kind of like bring a bunch of other people into tech um, and, and kind of use my platform and my privilege and my voice to help give that to other people that have not had the opportunity to, to have that. Um, that's something that I really strongly believe in. And so that's a big part of who I am and that's going to be a part of like whatever job I take. 
But aside from that, like, where do I want to take my career? And so we had a really good conversation about that. And I'm probably going to start talking about that during a daytime stream. Um, so for this Thursday, I'm still going to do the Thursday night stream. And that's where I'm going to do the giveaway. And so you've got to be here. You've got to be in the chat on Twitch. Um, so go to twitch.tv slash Ian Douglas 736. Not just Ian Douglas if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, it'll be Ian Douglas 736. You've got to be on the live chat in order to enter. Uh, there's a little bang command that you'll enter in the Twitch chat. So you have to have a free Twitch account in order to do it. Um, but you will need to hang out in the chat and interact in chat in order to get a ticket um, for like the giveaway. And then I'm going to do like several rounds of those giveaways in between all the resume reviews that Josh and I are going to do. So that's kind of the plan for Thursday night. And then, uh, like I said, I'm going to try to stream more during the daytime. Um, the later part of this week and into next week, depending on job offers and when I actually start the, the next job. Uh, we'll kind of see how that all plays out. Um, but um, I may I may drop the Thursday night stream and do like during the day kind of stream. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what uh, what folks want and kind of where the viewership is, is going to be and stuff like that. Again, I'm not doing this to make money. I'm just here to help people out. Um, but if it's just me talking to myself, I'm not really helping anybody except everybody that's watching it on YouTube after the fact, which is a lot of people. But I love the interactivity of doing live streams. That's kind of why I want to be here. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll kind of see how it plays out uh, over this week and next. Um, but I do want to get into more live coding and, and talk about some of the projects that I'm working on, some of the automation that I'm doing, um, especially around like the podcast and the and the uh, YouTube short videos and stuff like that. That's uh, something that I still want to get into, like setting up an automation on this little Linux box right here this little box right here that, that you see um it's just a little tiny linux server but i want to set up a cron job where like as i enter stuff into that database to say like hey i've got like a new uh you know podcast thing to go process that it's just going to start chewing on that thing and like spit out the video and spit out the podcast stuff that i can just upload and then eventually automate that with apis to just also publish and then i don't even have to think about publishing it i can just go through and, and mark all the start and stop times and it'll just take care of everything else so that's the goal um and so i want to do more of that as the live coding um, but we'll see we'll see kind of how that plays out puppy decided to come and wrap himself around one of my feet and keep my my foot warm um i've also been thinking about getting like another camera just to point at the dog and have like a Riker cam um at some point because he likes he likes being on camera. Well, he I mean, he sleeps, so he doesn't really care one way or the other. But he's okay with people watching him sleep. Um, I have his permission to have him on camera. So um, let's see what else. Uh, the email series. I, so the last time I reported uh, about the email series, I'm, I'm going through and I'm rewriting everything into four email lists. I said I was about halfway through. Um, I actually went back and counted. I'm not halfway through. I'm not even close to halfway through i'm about um i'm maybe 40 percent of the way through um and so i've still got a lot of content to go through and kind of reorganize and, and rewrite um and so it's not going to happen by the end of november uh which is technically tuesday um i'm really hoping to get it launched during december though so in the new year people can sign up for the those four lists i do have to rewrite that software a little bit uh, as far as like how it's going to manage everything in the databases and, and things like that um and the endpoints to like fetch all the data and so on and so on but um i need to i need to finish like writing the content and the material before uh, people can start subscribing the other thing i thought of is i could just do like the first five or six messages in the series publish that and then when people sign up those will start going out and then i'll be like oh shoot i better do the next one otherwise they're not going to get a next one um so i do want to uh, but I do want to get those wrapped up and finished up um, and get them through some people to proofread and, and so on. Um, so that's that's kind of my goal um, once my job at Stream kind of wraps up uh, in between jobs. So hopefully I get a job offer uh, not too far in the future, but we'll see. Um, let's see what else that I have on the list. Um, oh yeah, well, I already talked about the job hunt update, so I won't bother getting into that. So if you're hanging out in chat, let me know, say hello. I do want to test out the giveaway thing. 
Um, and so if you are there, let me know and I can actually log in on like another account or whatever and just test it with you. Um, but I'm not going to test it just by myself. I need like multiple people to enter so that I can actually pick from like one of many people. So uh, if you're there, if you happen to be watching, uh, just drop a hello in chat. Let me know you're there and, uh, and we'll test out that new layout uh, of the screen and, and things like that. And then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Time to hydrate. So Chris, good to see you, Trash Dev. So Chris, I don't know whether you were here for the uh, for the three D printing stuff that I was talking about. Did you did you see the uh, the dragons that I made? Basically, three D printed these really sick articulated dragon models, and the colors are pretty incredible. It's kind of like a red and gold transition, and then. I've got this one, which is kind of like a, a bronze burgundy charcoal kind of transition color. And these things are pretty wild. So this is the giveaway that I'm doing on Thursday. I'm going to be giving away a whole bunch of these as well as these little horse models. All these little horse models as well. Um, they're just meant to be like little toys for kids and, and stuff. Um, how much do you have to spend to do all this? Oh, as far as the 3D printers? Um, I mean, 3D printing is actually getting pretty cheap these days. You can buy a, a 3D printer, like an entry-level 3D printer. Um, well, I mean, if you buy one by tomorrow with uh, Cyber Monday, um, you could pick up like an entry-level 3D printer for like 200 bucks, 250 bucks. Um, a spool of filament that's like sitting up here, sitting on this printer right here behind me. A spool of filament's like 20, 25 bucks for the, for the cheap stuff and decent filaments like... 30 to 40 bucks and I can print like a whole bunch of those dragons off of one spool of filament um, and so it actually doesn't cost very much to get started um, these printers are about 700 bucks 750 bucks uh, they're made in the Czech Republic and I've got three of those and then I've got a Creality printer down here at the end that I backed on Kickstarter and I think it was 350 um, the idea originally was to donate that Creality to the school where I was working because it was a nonprofit. And so I was going to write it off. Um, but then uh, we ended up going remote by the time the printer arrived. And so I just kept it. Um, and yeah, 3D printing is decently easy. Um, the hardest thing is really understanding how 3D printers work and then how to maintain the, the printer itself. Because sometimes the filament will like jam up inside the nozzle. And like, how do you clean that out? You just use like a little acupuncture needle and you just kind of poke it up into the nozzle. Um, and you can like pull the gunk out. Or um, as the filament's cooling down, you just yank it back out of the, uh, the hot end and it'll like pull out whatever's jamming it up. So it really comes down to just how do you maintain that stuff? It's really not that hard. Um, some printers, uh, the hardest part is like making sure the bed is perfectly level so that as it's printing, it can print those layers uh, one at a time. Smarter printers will kind of auto level themselves and so they have a little sensor and so they'll go around, they'll tap on the print bed and try to figure out like where things are perfectly level or where they're a little bit off and it'll adjust accordingly based on where it has to print. Um, some printers are dumb though and you literally use these little turn screws and, you, and so you're only positioning the four corners. Um, those ones are a little harder to get started, but those are also like the $150, $200 printers. Um, but you can get decently like smart auto leveling printers for like 350 bucks. They're not that expensive now. Um, but even the, even the ones that you have to level by hand, it's not that bad. Like you, you level it and it's good for several prints. Then you, and you kind of readjust it and make sure that it's perfectly level and then you do several more prints. Like as long as you're not banging the thing around, it's pretty safe. Um, and I know you've got a, a, a kid or at least one kid, right? Um, and so this filament is actually decently safe, uh, as far as like being kid friendly. Um, like it doesn't give off fumes. There are filaments that give off fumes, like really, really bad obnoxious fumes. And that's like ABS, which is what they make Lego bricks out of. You can actually buy ABS filament and 3d print your own Lego bricks if you want to, but that stuff really stinks when it prints. Um, and it actually lets off, I want to say it's like arsenic gas or something like that. And so you have to vent it to the outside. Um, it's, it's pretty nasty stuff. Um, you can also get into resin printing, but again, the resin stuff is super toxic and it's really sticky and it's almost impossible to get out of clothing if you spill it on yourself. Um, and so I would stay away from resin printing if you've got the little one at home. 
Um, but these printers are, are actually really safe. You just have to teach your kid, like, don't touch it when it's doing its thing because it's really hot. Like, these, these hot ends will go 215 Celsius usually for PLA. So whatever that is in Fahrenheit, it's, like, really hot. Um, I don't even know what that conversion is. Hey, Google, convert 215 Celsius to Fahrenheit. 420 degrees Fahrenheit so it's a little hot um, so you definitely don't want your kid like poking around at it while it's printing you'll definitely want to like put it away where they can't reach it and stuff like that but um, but uh, from what it sounds like your your little one's little enough that they're not even maybe walking around yet so I wouldn't wouldn't worry too much about that but yeah you don't want the you don't want the little kid poking at it for sure I waited till my kids were a little bit older I've been 3d printing now for four years uh, and my kids are like 10 and 13 um, and so I'm just like, don't touch it. It's hot. You're going to burn yourself. They're like, okay. And they like, leave it alone. You have a crazy three-year-old that will be a little bit harder. You'll definitely want to like put it up on a taller, like bench or something like that, where they can't reach it or just teach them like this thing is like fire hot and it will burn you and like, it will wreck your fingers. Like don't touch it. Um, and a four month old. Oh, cool. Congrats. Good deal. Actually, it's, uh, it's about. That's pretty close to like how how our kids are spread out. Um, our oldest just turned 13, and our youngest is not going to be 11 until next uh, early next year. So, yeah, they're about the same. He won't care and touch it anyways. Yeah, he's only got to do it once, <laughs> and then he'll learn himself. I shouldn't I shouldn't have done that. Um, so it's it's not too bad. But yeah, 3D printing is actually really easy. So you just you find the model, you put it into some software that basically slices it layer by layer and it, can, it converts it into like a set of instructions. And you put that on an SD card, you pop that in your printer and you say print. And I mean, once like once the bed is leveled and you get good filament and you don't worry about jams and stuff like that, like you just let them print and, and away they go. So it's, it's pretty sweet. Can't wait till they're independent. Well, I really liked when my kids turned like two or three and they could start talking. You could hear all the stuff going on in their head. Uh, that was like the most entertaining time for me as a parent. It was pretty great. Um, our youngest, well, our, our oldest started talking when he was two or three. He stopped around like five. Our youngest started when he was two or three and he hasn't really stopped. So everyone's different. No, just kidding. He stopped. He actually started getting really quiet about it a year, year and a half ago. But uh, they're both awesome. Like it's it's so fun just watching their personalities as they grow up. Um but yeah, the independence is pretty nice too. Like we can we can actually go out now. Like my wife and I can go out and uh, leave the kids at home because the oldest one's technically old enough to be a babysitter. And so we can just go out on date night again. It's pretty great. Not have to worry about like having someone come to the house and, and watch them. So pretty fun stuff. Um, cool deal. I wonder if anybody else is hanging out in chat. A couple of people. Ladybug. Um... Adelina, Bing Cortana, if any of you are around, if you can like say hi in chat, just let me know you're there. Um, I want to I want to practice the giveaway thing. I've never used it on stream elements before, and actually want to like give it a test run. But I need like a bunch of people to be in chat um, in order to try it out. But uh, yeah, aside from that, it's it's it's, uh, it's kind of a crapshoot how many people actually show up on a Sunday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time to uh, to listen to career advice. But uh, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll I'll probably wait for a few other people to drop into chat, and then I'll uh, I'll switch over from there. So I'm just gonna switch gears. I'm gonna go into kind of Q and A mode um, for like some questions that were submitted. I actually may just do one of them tonight, and then um, and then we'll go from there. This question's a little bit long, but uh, we'll get it up on the screen to kind of look at. <clears throat> and then, uh, so Chris, kind of my, my workflow on these Q&A uh, things is I basically have a little Python script that I run later where I give it a start and stop time. And it basically extracts the video of just me asking and answering the question. And then that gives me a YouTube short. And then I grab the audio from that and it gives me my podcast audio. And then I just do like an intro and outro on either side for both YouTube and the podcast. And uh, it's just using FFmpeg for that. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Taiwanese name. Coding Garden fan, cool. All right, well, there's a whole bunch of folks here. 4 a.m. Dang, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out. Super late. 
Um, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch uh, switch gears then. I'm gonna go do that. So let me switch over to this screen. Um, so this is the screen that I'm gonna use for Thursday, and I need to go set up the giveaway. So give me a second to do that, and then <clears throat> we'll actually have all of you help me with a test run of the giveaway here. So let me go over to giveaways, copy. Create and start. All right, cool. So it is now live. You'll see down at the very bottom of the screen here, you'll see the 3D printed toy giveaway. Um, and what I need you all to do is just type exclamation point ticket in the chat, and it should tell you that you got a ticket. See, Trash Dev did that. They got one ticket. If you try it a second time, it should tell you you've already got a ticket. Um, but try, try and do the exclamation point ticket a couple of times just to make sure. Um, Failed to enter too many tickets. All right, cool. So it's it's only letting you enter one time. Um, but yeah, if everybody in chat, so coding garden fan and Taiwanese name, if you can do exclamation point ticket, I'm just I just want to test it out and just kind of see how it's going from here. Um, and I'm going to refresh on this screen and refresh here, and it should start a 15 minute counter way over there in the top. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start that counter and then Josh and I are going to be doing a resume review. So Josh is my HR buddy and we're going to talk about like how an HR person would view a resume and then how I would view it as a technical hiring manager. And then uh, one, hopefully we get through that in 15 minutes and then it's time to draw a winner. And then we're going to just repeat that over and over uh, until we give away all those dragons and the little horse figurines and stuff like that. So it uh, should be pretty fun. So let's see. I think we got three entries. Sweet. All right. So what I can do over here is I can say close giveaway and then I draw a winner and Trash Dev is the winner. And so at that point, I guess I would say like, hey, like DM me like your address or something like that. Uh, and then we'll go from there. It's rigged. It's not rigged, I promise. Um, it's not rigged and I can prove it and I can prove it by showing you uh, this window. Yeah, see up here. It, it picked Trash Dev right here. That was the giveaway winner. Um, what I don't see on here is, oh, I can draw another winner. Oh, I can just keep doing that then. Hmm, maybe I should just do that. All right, so Coding Garden Fan won one, Taiwanese name won, and then there's not enough entrance to win more. So that's actually a pretty simple UI. Pretty happy with how Stream Elements set it up. The, the thing I didn't like to have to do is like rebuild my entire window system just to have the widget on the screen do it, to do a giveaway. Um, Larry is not Bob. What's going on? Good to have you in chat for the first time. Hello. Uh, my day is going great. Uh, we're just testing out kind of this giveaway thing um, for Thursday. And I'll show you a little bit of what's going on there. So I'm just going to switch back to my other screen cool thanks everybody for uh, helping me test that out um so for everybody new in chat i've got these really cool 3d printed dragon models that i'm going to give away um and it's basically this big articulated dragon it's just a bunch of hinges inside that 3d print um, but it 3d prints all in one piece um, to where the hinges don't come apart and so it 3d prints the hinge mechanism inside and then like encloses it in a way that it's not going to come apart unless you break it. Um, but I've, I've got this really cool transition color filament. Like usually when we print things, it comes out one solid color. Um, but you can buy filament that actually changes color um, on the spool. And so then you get these really cool effects uh, going on. And so uh, this one I'm keeping. This one's actually my favorite one so far. Um, but I've got a couple of these that are kind of more like rainbow color. Uh, so this one's in the giveaway. I've got this one, it's kind of like this shiny black uh, silk sort of color. So it's like super, super shiny. Um, so he's being given away. And then I've got, I got a second one in the rainbow. But again, because of how the rainbow filament prints, they're not ever exactly the same. These ones were kind of close where it started on burgundy and went to blue. Um, but this one had a lot more burgundy on the bottom than this one did. This one started with very little burgundy on the bottom. So the transitions happened a little bit differently. So those are in the giveaway, and then I've got this one. This is actually a uh, color-changing filament. 
I'm just gonna like turn up the heat on my heater down here. So basically this one changes color with temperature. And so just holding it in your hand um, within a couple of minutes, it'll turn kind of a rose color. And if it gets hot enough, it'll turn like a bright yellow color. So all I'm doing is I'm holding it in front of the heater just to kind of expedite that a little bit because it's freezing cold in my basement right now. My hands are so cold, it won't change the color. Um, but you can see it'll actually change color based on getting really warm. And so it's kind of this rose color kind of midway through and then it turns yellow on top. But as it cools down, it'll turn back into kind of this Godzilla green sort of color. Um, and so that's in the giveaway. And then the last one is kind of this fire, red, orange, kind of gold blend, which is really cool. And so I'm giving all these away on Thursday, along with a set of these little horse figurines. So I've got horses, unicorns, Pegasus, and Pegasus unicorns. Um, and I'm basically just going to mix and match, and I'm going to do the drawings, and uh, I'm going to give all these away on Thursday, just for the heck of it. And then I've got another one printing on the printer right now, which is going to be really close to this one that I really, really like. Um, but the color transitions, again, are a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to have six sets of these things to give away. And so what we're going to do on Thursday is basically, uh, Thursday is just resume reviews. And so if you want to do a resume review, if you want me to review your resume, I know a bunch of you did them on Chris's channel already, but if you want me to do one, um, I've been in the tech industry for 25 years. I've been in management and leader roles for over a decade. And I've looked at probably close to 10 to 15,000 resumes over my career. Um, and so I've got opinions on what I think makes a good tech resume. Um, so if you want me to do a resume review for you, um, I just dropped in chat. Ah, it didn't work. Dang it. Um, let me do this in chat. My stream deck's not working suddenly. Resume review. There we go. Um, so you can upload a copy of your resume at this link that I just dropped in chat, uh, techinterview.guide slash streaming. There's a little form on the bottom that you can upload a copy of your resume. And I, I ask similar things that Chris does where you anonymize your name, take out your phone number and your email address because I don't want to dox anybody. Um, and then um, basically I'm going to be using those resumes on Thursday. So if you want me to do a resume review, shoot them over. I still need like five. Um, I've had a couple come in and uh, basically I'm not, I'm not looking at them like too closely. I just want to make sure that they've been anonymized and then I'm closing them back down because I do want to give kind of first impression kind of thing uh, on, the, on the resumes um, for both Josh, who is an HR manager, and then myself as a technical hiring manager and what each of us would look for in a resume and what we like about them, what we don't like about them. And it's just gonna be like a quick, like 10, 15 minute thing. And then we're gonna draw a name for the giveaway. And then we're gonna do the next resume. Now submitting a resume doesn't put you in the giveaway. You still have to do the bang ticket thing in the, in the chat, um, but it'll be pretty fun. Uh, I've, been, I've been really uh, excited to have someone else do resume reviews with me on my own stream. Uh, Cause I don't wanna just be another white dude on the internet with opinions. There's enough of us out there with opinions already. I like having people on my stream that can help kind of express their opinions and their perspectives on things too. Um, and so Chris, if you ever wanna be on the stream, I'd love to have you on the, on the stream. It'll be Thursday night, 7 p.m. Mountain. So it'll be 6 p.m. Pacific time, uh, which I know isn't a great time for folks on the West Coast uh, cause it kind of conflicts with dinner. Um, but if you wanna come by Thursday night, I'd be happy to, uh, to have you on the stream. Um, but uh, yeah, Chris, if you ever want to be on the stream, I'd love to have you just as a guest on the stream and we can just chat about like different things in tech and, and how you got into tech. I love just hearing other people's stories and sort of your progression in your career and like what you're doing now and you know, what your interview processes have been like, uh, you know, especially with the new job that you got and things like that. I'd love to uh, uh, kind of step in on, on some of that if you're, if you're game for it. Sweet, cool. Um, I'll, uh, I'll DM you on Twitch or on, or actually I'm, I'm on your discord. So I'll just, uh, I'll chat with you there. Um, Larry is not Bob in chat says I'm a beginner level type of guy. That's fine. Actually, most of, most of the advice and most of the career stuff I do on my channel is geared to people that are getting new into tech. That's why I built this whole website. Techinterview.guide is mostly for people that are brand new, trying to get into the tech industry. How do you build a resume? How do you build a cover letter? What are some points about like, how do you even prepare for interviews? What should you study? What should you not bother studying? Um, how do you do networking? How do you do company research and stuff like that? That's everything that my channel is all about. It's like, how do you even get started on all this stuff? Um, 
And, and so that's, that's a big part of, of what I do. Um, and so for me, just being a lead dev, getting into like senior roles and like architect roles and, and getting into like director of engineering and actually being in charge of hiring, I got to like reinvent hiring practices, which was fantastic because I got to do things differently than everybody else in tech. Uh, is kind of doing them with just the typical leak code kind of challenges, which suck, uh, especially when you're in your career 25 years and then you've got to do the same like depth first search leak code crap that everybody else has to kind of jump through those hoops. It's garbage. It's like, it's, it's so trash. Uh, I, I don't enjoy it at all. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, by all means, like hang out, drop questions in chat. I'm happy to uh, to take questions anytime in, in my chat. I love to be interactive and, and have folks uh, drop questions and stuff about like what you're doing in tech or like how you can progress in tech and things like that. So uh, Taiwanese name says, I don't feel ready to apply as a beginner yet. I'm stuck in my React project to put in the portfolio. That's fine. You don't have to apply for the job yet, but I would start networking with companies now so that when you are ready to apply, you've already built up that rapport with them so that you can say, hey, Ian, we've been chatting for a while. I finished up this project. Could I get you to do a code review on this part of the project? Don't ask them to code review the whole thing. Nobody's got time for that. But if you say, hey, I, I wrote up this whole thing. Could you look at like this function or this one component in React? I'm kind of curious how I could optimize that. Could you help me out with that one thing? Every, like every engineer is like, I can help you with something small, but don't ask me to like review the entire thing. Um, but build up that rapport and keep in contact with them and say, hey, I added this new feature. Do you remember that project you looked at? I added this new thing. If you want to like log in and just, you know, if you got like two minutes to tell me what you think, start that networking now. The sooner you start that networking, the easier it's going to be to get that job later because then you can reach back out to that person and say, hey, I'm ready to start applying for work. Do you happen to have anything for an entry level dev? You, you like you know me you've been chatting with me you've been doing code reviews you see the quality of my work you see how i've been progressing on this stuff could you go talk to your manager or whatever see if there's like an entry level role or something like that you'd be surprised how quickly some people are like yeah i'll totally help you with that or go to hr and be like i know this junior dev taiwanese name we've been chatting a lot i got a resume from them do we have anything open um so yeah, that's that's like the number one way that you're going to get your first job in tech is mostly through networking. And then it, then then when they do interview, yeah, you have to have some level of skill, but then it comes down to your interview process of how do you talk through problems? How do you do problem solving? How do you do uh, like what's your decision making when you have to actually go write some code? It's a lot more about your process and communication to get that first job in tech. Yes, you're like you have to be able to code, but it's less about the quality of your code and more about the process of how you wrote that code. Um, and so you don't have to apply yet. You can keep working on your project, but start networking now and start reaching out to those companies. So generally what I tell people to do is reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'll drop my LinkedIn uh, here in the chat. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Don't follow me. Connect with me on LinkedIn. And then you can actually, um, on my LinkedIn portfolio, you can click where it says like 500 plus connections and you can actually search for companies through me to find out if I know anybody there and I will make introductions for you and say, yeah, this person hangs out on my stream. I don't know a lot about them, but they're curious about your company. Would you mind like helping them out? Um, like I'm happy to make introductions for folks. I've, I've done it all the time on my stream and, and I have a lot of folks take me up on it. A lot of people don't, which is surprising. It's like I tell people all the time, it's like connect with me on LinkedIn, find people, I will make introductions and people are like, no, I don't want to bug you. I'm telling you, bug me. If you are watching this video, bug me, connect with me on LinkedIn, ask me to make an introduction for you. I will make introductions. Um, like one person reached out <laughs> one time and they're like, could you introduce me to this person? I'm like, sure. And like a few minutes later, well, how about these other like three or four people? Like, is that too much? I'm like, no, it's fine. And I like wrote intros. By the time we were done, I had written intros to like 40 people for this one person. And I'm like, cool. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry for wasting your time. I'm like, it's not a waste of time. If this gets you a job, that's what I'm here for. So absolutely, I will make introductions. Um, so yeah, I mean, as far as like, start that networking now. Because the sooner you can start that networking, the faster it's going to be to get that job later when you do feel like you're ready to start applying for those jobs. 
Or maybe in the meantime, through that networking, maybe you don't even have to bother applying for a job. You can just say like, hey, does your company have anything? And they're like, yeah, let's just bring you in for an interview. A lot of companies are happy to shortcut the process, especially for an internal referral. And if you can find someone at a company and have them refer you for that job, they could get paid anywhere from like a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand dollars for a referral if that person gets hired and stays for 90 days. So it's worth it for them. Like it's a good incentive for employees to try to find candidates for those roles. And so don't worry about how much experience you have or don't have. Don't call yourself a junior dev. Don't say you're an aspiring dev. Just you're a developer. You've got some experience in React. Here's your project. And let them evaluate how much you've done and how much you know. That's their job as the interviewer. But start the networking soon. Um, and you'll find it's going to shortcut things a lot uh, later on. This is what I do on my channel is I love interacting with folks and just drop little nuggets like that and be like, here's how I would do it. And this is exactly how I got into my own job hunt recently is I reached out to people and said, hey, I really want to apply for that job. And uh, this one company where I really, really want to get uh, a job there, um, I reached out and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about applying for a job at your company. And they're like, cool, send me, send me a resume. And, you know, and because uh, he also live streams and he'll occasionally do a resume review and I send it over. And he's like, oh, this resume looks really good. I'm like, yeah, I'm applying for this team. And he's like, that's my team. I'm like, yeah. Like, I want to go work for you at your company. Um, and he's like, all right, let's make it happen. And I got in the interview process that way. Now, they had an opening, but, you know, I was able to kind of, like, go in uh, through that way. And so networking really matters. Like, it is, like, just like Hollywood. It's about who you know. It's really about who you know and who you can get introduced to. And if they don't have a job, who can they introduce you to? Like, once you start building up that network, you can say, well, if your company doesn't have anything, do you know anybody that's hiring junior devs? Could you help make an introduction and like pass along that, that introduction thing and like keep that chain going? And then figure out some way of like paying it back later. Like once you get established and you're in your career, help somebody else out that way. Like tell other people like, hey, if you need me to do an introduction, that's how I got my job and just pay it forward to other people. That's all I ask. I don't, I don't do streaming to make money. Um, I try to shut off the ads. Um, like I don't care about subscribers. Like I care about followers. I don't care about subscribers because I'm not in this to make money. I've been in tech for 25 years. I don't need the money. Um, I mean, money's nice, but you know, I'm not doing this to make money. I'm doing this to help people out, like genuinely help people out. Um, Zooey, good to see you, man. Uh, Zooey, tell them in chat like how I've been helping you out. Um, so Zooey went to a code school that I did a talk at and Zooey and I stayed in touch and you know, a lot of this stuff is, has kind of been uh, playing out there. So Zooey, tell them in chat uh, what's been going on and, uh, and how's your job hunt going by the way? Cause I haven't heard from you lately about uh, interviews and stuff like that. You've been a little quiet lately. So bring, bring me up, bring us all up to speed on, on what you're up to. Cool. Um, while Zoo is doing that, <laughs> I'm a kind person. Thanks. Um, I mean, I try to be. I've, I've been in. I've been in tech long enough. It's like you know what? It's time to give back. It's genuinely like it's time to give back, and I'm happy to do it for free. So my whole website is free. There's no ads. I do like Google Analytics cookies on there just so I can see like which pages are popular and which ones have like um, you know optimization problems. But that's all I track. Um, I've got a whole daily email series that you can subscribe to where like every day for six weeks you get like a technical or behavioral question and I explain not how to answer the question, but why that kind of question is important to me as a hiring manager. Like this is why I'm asking you this question. Like when I'm asking you, tell me about yourself. I'm not asking for your life story. I want you to tell me why I should hire you. And so I like kind of pull back the curtain a little bit and I explain like as a hiring manager, this is what we ask. This is why we're asking it. This is what we want to hear in your answer. But I don't tell you like, oh, say this. This is like the magic phrase that'll like get you, you know, through the interview. I don't do any of that. Um, and so you can go sign up for that email series. Uh, it's six weeks long. And I'm in the process right now of breaking that out into four different email series, but that's several weeks away yet. Um, but it's going to be like a whole series just on how to prepare, a whole series on what the interview process is like. And then a whole, and then I'm breaking up the technical and behavioral into two lists. So I'm going to have four lists total. Right now it's one combined list that's six weeks long. Um, and then once I break up the other ones, like some of them are still going to be like several weeks long. Some of them will only be like two weeks long and that's fine. And as soon as, as soon as you get the last message in any series, it removes your stuff out of my database because I don't care about remarketing. I'm again, I'm not in this to make money. I'm not in this to sell you anything. 
Um, and so once it's done, I unsubscribe you. So you never have to worry about me spamming you and, and stuff later on. So, um, so how to subscribe, you can go to techinterview.guide and you'll see a link on the menu uh, that says daily email series and you'll type in your email address. That's gonna send you an email with a link and you have to click on that link. It's, so it's a double opt-in. I take all that stuff really seriously because I used to work at SendGrid. So I take email marketing like really, really seriously. Um, I've got like 100% uh, you know, sender uh, score, like reputation or whatever because um, I don't spam people. And like every message you get from me is a legit message and it's coming from me. Um, and so you just go sign up. You'll get that email. You'll click that link. That just confirms that, yes, you really do want to get those messages. And then like tomorrow, you'll start getting those messages basically. So I send those out every morning, mountain time, like 7 a.m., 8 a.m., mountain time. Um, those will go out. And then let's see what else. There's something else I was going to say. Now I can't remember what. Oh, uh, you can reply to any of the messages that you get. And it actually comes straight to my inbox. Um, again, like I'm here to help people out. So if you've got a question about any of the content that you get, you can just hit reply and you get straight to my inbox. Um, and I've helped a lot of people out that way too. So cool. All right. Well, it's good to have uh, some liveliness going on in the chat. Maybe I should start these streams at like 7.30 instead of 7 o'clock. Seems a whole bunch of people showed up like 10, 15 minutes ago. Um, so catching up from Zooey. Past week had a huge lull. Yeah, there was a bit of a lull because of the holidays. Like I did a couple of my interviews like Monday, Tuesday, and I didn't hear anything back by Wednesday. And I'm like, oh, now I'm not going to hear anything until Monday, um, which is disappointing, but I get it. You know, people need their time off too. Uh, had a super busy Monday with follow-up emails from companies. Awesome that you're still in talks with getting rejections. Rejection is still progress, so that's okay. Um, and people who I've networked with to keep my name fresh in their minds, awesome when they start hiring for next year. That's great. And so keep working on those projects and keep emailing those people, Zooey, and let them know, like, this is what I've done in this project. I just want to, like, bring you up to speed on this stuff, and I'm really excited to, like, you know, hear what you got going on in the new year. Um, so, yeah, it's great. been tweaking my resume, so I might send it to you. Yeah, send it to me by Thursday. I'm, like, Thursday night's going to be a whole bunch of resume reviews. So if you want to send it over uh, by Thursday, that would be fantastic, and I'll, I'll go back through that for you. Um, what else is going on in the chat? <clears throat> um, sorry, Taiwanese name. I, I missed this other question from you. If I dropped out of university, should I skip the education section on the resume? Um, I have mixed feelings on that. It depends how far you got through university and what classes you took. Um, one thing that I've coached people on in the past is you can say that you started university and you completed, you know, five credits or you completed 30 credits or whatever. Um, and, and list the classes that you did take and that you did pass successfully, it's, it's still good to show an employer, like I started some classes, I've got a little bit of training and now I'm like self-teaching or I've gone to a boot camp instead or like something along those lines. You can always explain that during the interview um, or you can just apply for like a, an internship as if you were still a university student. Um, you know, if you've like fully dropped out and like completely withdrawn from university, then you may not qualify for the internships. Um, but you you could still ask companies like, hey, I've got some university credits. Can I apply for an internship just to get some experience? They may still consider you. So it can't hurt to have it on there. Um, you don't want to say like, oh, I started going to university and I dropped out. Um, but you can just say like, I started going to this university. I completed this many credits. These are the classes that I took, especially if they're computer science classes that'll still look good on a resume <clears throat> that you have some of that knowledge if you're a hundred percent self-taught um that's not that's not necessarily a bad thing but it will be less trusted than if you've actually taken classes at a university or college um, and so list out what those classes are you don't have to put your gpa or anything on there but just say i completed 30 credit hours or 20 credits or like whatever like however you can quantify that and then just list the classes that you did take and that'll be enough for some places uh, just to get your foot in the door. Uh, Stephen Hungry says, I got your Google onsite this weekend. Oh, sweet. On Wednesday? Cool. Good luck with that. Um, that's that's exciting. Google interviews are hard. Um, I did an interview with Google, uh, geez, almost a decade ago. Um, yeah, it was almost a decade ago I interviewed with them and it was for an SRE position. So there's still like a lot of coding uh, to do like system administration and, and SRE. And uh, I got through all the technical side of it and they're like, all right, we need to start wrapping up and figure out what team you're going to be on and we want you to work out of this office. 
and it was in Venice Beach, California. We had just moved away from Santa Monica, which is like a 15 minute drive. We had just moved like 90 minutes from there. And I'm like, I can't make a 90 minute commute to go to work every day. Like that's just not gonna work. And they're like, yeah, I said, you know, can I go work in your Irvine, California office? It's way closer to where I'm, I'm living. And they're like, well, no, the team we wanna put you on is in Venice. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do that drive. Like that drive almost literally killed me one time. Um, like I, I was falling asleep at the wheel and somebody was watching me fall asleep and got into a car accident themselves because I was falling asleep. They were like, look at that guy falling asleep. Ah! And they like crashed into somebody. Um, and I'm like, I, I can't do that kind of commute anymore. Um, it was just like, I'm not gonna lose three hours of my day and work a Google job. Um, so I actually withdrew uh, from that. And it was super disappointing because at the time I really, really wanted to work at Google. And uh, as soon as I moved out to Colorado, they're like, they're like, you know, not knocking on my door, but they're sending me emails. They're like, you know, we have offices here in Colorado, right? <laughs> And they're, they're going to be pretty close based on where you're living. We've got offices in Boulder. And uh, I'm like, uh, you know, I need to get established in Colorado first. And so I, I actually never went back to reapply. But uh, good luck with that on, on Wednesday. It's, it's going to be it's going to be challenging. They really like heat problems and bit manipulation problems and uh, traversals. Um, when I interviewed with them, they were really big on like depth research and backtracking and then uh, bit manipulation. Those were the ones that I got. Um, and I've heard of other people like more recently say that they're really into heat problems. So yeah, good luck with it. It's uh, not for the faint of heart, for sure. Hopefully you've been uh, keeping up on your leak code, for sure. That's gonna be uh, a, a necessary requirement for sure to get into Google. Actually, if any of you have followed Midnight Simon uh, here on Twitch, he just got a job at Google. He uh, he started grinding and like a few weeks in they contacted him and he managed to like push out his initial phone screen and like got really serious and he was on on twitch every single day he did like 150 days straight of, of just leak code grinding and built up like his own uh community of that and then he got through that initial interview they wanted to do the on-site he pushed that out as far as he could which was like five weeks and he just he went all in he like dropped every hobby dropped like everything he possibly could and just did nothing but grind on leak code i think he quit his job just so he could grind leak code and uh, he got the job no problem um, he thought that he failed like one part of the the interview but uh, he made it through their process and uh, he got a job there so it was pretty sweet so yeah if, uh... oh the other dragon finished i'm gonna go grab it in a sec um and so yeah doing lots of, of grinding seven months of grinding that's that's quite a bot um yeah, Trash Dev, you know, Simon, yeah, he's over at Google now. I've been following him on his Discord, and he's like, he's just hanging out eating his wings now. It's great. So I actually caught up with his channel like a while back, and uh, it was fun just to just to log in on, on the nights that I wasn't streaming. I would go hang out on his stream. Uh, so yeah, really super chill dude, for sure. Uh, Taiwanese name says in chat, I finished the whole three years, non-IT, did sociology, that's fine. In my country, you need to write and present a thesis, 60 pages, wow. Uh, at the end of university to get the degree professor for my thesis was told by the higher-ups that his contract with the university wouldn't be extended and I and I refused to hold the thesis because of that interesting um, hmm I mean if you've got a degree in something else um, even if you didn't finish the thesis portion of it you could still say you completed all the classes um, and that you you know you completed all the credits or whatever that you needed and still listed as a degree it still shows that you finished something it may stand out to HR a little bit. It's like, okay, well, they might understand the reason why you didn't do your thesis, like you're trying to stand up for somebody. At the same time, like this is your career, this was your education. Um, like, could you look past that at some point and go back and finish it? Um, but that's really like up to you and how you wanna tell that story. The fact that it's not tech related is fine. There are a lot of people that didn't uh, take any kind of tech background and still got into technology jobs. So. As long as you finish some kind of education and then like going into like a, a self-taught path, that can still work out okay. People can still hire you based on that. But like I said, being 100% self-taught won't be as trusted as if you go to something with accreditation. So like a code school or a boot camp um, or even like free code camp, like get some of their certifications or something and start listing those things. It just shows that you followed some curriculum so that they have a little bit of trust in what you've studied. 
because if you're just 100% self-taught, they don't really know what you've looked at, which tutorials you've followed, and whether they can really trust that you've followed good practices and that you have good habits and good behaviors and things like that to be on their team. And so it's not that you won't be trusted at all, it's just less trusted than if you're actually following somebody's curriculum. Um, and so even if you just list on there, like, you know, you did some Udemy classes or you did like a Udacity course or you did like free code camp or whatever, just list out that you were following some kind of curriculum. And I think companies are generally going to be okay with that. And again, start applying for like internship level roles and see if you can get your foot in the door. Um, but as I mentioned uh, before to someone else, like just start the networking as soon as you can. And uh, because that networking is what's really going to help you get that job. Um, and so the sooner you can start that networking and, and talk with people about the progress that you're making on the projects and what you're implementing in those projects and what you're building, that's really what's going to help you out. Um, as opposed to just blind applying for jobs because those applicant tracking systems are going to get your resume. They're going to see that you don't have like a technical education um, or, you know, they, it may not pick up like what you've actually studied. It may see project work on there, but you know, it may not actually make it past some of the criteria that they look for when they're screening for resumes. And that'll be some of the stuff that we're going to talk to Josh about on Thursday. He knows a little bit about how these applicant tracking systems work. And so we may get into that a little bit as a topic and just say like, hey, like when somebody applies and they send in a resume, like what kinds of things is this software actually looking for in the resume to even give to him in HR for him to view it and see like, should I call trash dev or not? Um, and then do that initial screen and then pass me that resume. And then I look at it and go, should I also call trash dev or not? Um, and then like try to make, uh, you know, reasonings one way or the other uh, for like getting you into the interview process. So, um, so that's mostly what our conversation on Thursday is going to be about. And then we're actually going to do a bunch of resume reviews uh, along with all the giveaways. So Zoe says, definitely network. You'll find that putting a face to a resume helps more than just a resume with nothing for the companies to tie it to. Yeah, it's a good point. Having, having a face to a name is huge. Um, and just letting them know like, you know, you're a good individual and that you're willing to collaborate and that you can contribute to things and you've got things to offer. Um, like just have those things as conversation. One question that I get on the stream a lot is like, well, what do I even talk about when I do that networking? I did a whole stream a while back on how to do company research. So you can go to my YouTube channel. Um, I'll drop that in chat for you in a, in a minute. Um, and in the company research, video that I did, I basically talk about how to find data about the company, like what's important to you about the job? Is it the location? I mean, obviously salaries is a big thing, but like, are there specific kinds of perks that you're looking for? Is it a specific company size that you're looking for? If you're brand new in tech, you probably want to aim for like mid to big size companies. Smaller companies aren't going to have the same amount of support for you. And the salaries may also be lower. Um, and so, if, I mean, if you're just trying to get your foot in the door, that might be all right. But if you're looking for like mentorship and things like that within the company, you probably want to aim for like mid to large size companies, like 300 to 500 plus employees, um, where engineering is making up like 150 to 200 people. So any company where you get like 150 to 200 engineers or more, you probably want to start applying at those companies. And so as you're doing the research on, well, how big is the company? How many people are in engineering? If you can't find that information, then those are the questions you ask when you do your networking. And just say, hey, Chris, I'm thinking about like maybe applying to your company in the future. I found on LinkedIn, you've got this many employees. Is that accurate? How many of those would you say are in engineering? And just start tracking all this stuff in a spreadsheet. And then now you've got that information. You can ask yourself, like, is it okay that I found this information? Is it okay that I can't find that information? Maybe diversity is important. Does the company even publish diversity numbers? And if not, why not? You can ask that in your networking. Like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find information about diversity info and I can't find anything published by the company. Like, is that not something that the company does? Or is it just, it's not out yet? Like, or is it somewhere that I just can't see? Um, you can ask those questions as part of your networking. And so now you've got a list of questions that just keep that conversation flowing. So it's not just like, hey, Chris, what do you do during the day as a developer? And then they never want to talk to you again because you don't have good questions. But if you ask them like, hey, what do you like about your like overall work process? How do you pick your work? How do you like deploy that work? Or do you even do the deploys? Like how... How do, you, how do you go from picking what you work on to actually seeing it in production? Like, what's that process? 
what do you like about that process? What don't you like about that process? Is there anything you would change if you were in charge of like that whole process? What would you change? And why haven't you changed it? You can ask them some pretty direct questions too. You don't want to be a jerk about it. Be like, you know, if you don't like that thing, like why doesn't it change? Like, do you not have the authority to do it? Or, you know, is, is the team just really set in their ways? Or is your manager not want to allow those kinds of changes? Now you've got very specific questions that you can ask them. So maybe it's a tech stack thing. Like, you know, the job posts that I'm seeing say that you're using these technologies. Is the company exploring any other technologies? Like if I were to apply for a job in six months, could I go pick up some other language that make me look like a really like outstanding candidate if I were to learn some of that technology now? And they'd be like, yeah, you know what? We're actually kind of tinkering in Rust or Go or something like that. And be like, sweet. I'll be right back. I'm going to go build a project in that. And now when you go apply for that job, you've already got that skill on there with maybe one or two projects where now when they're looking for somebody with that skill, you've already networked, you've already taken kind of that advice, you've acted on that advice, now you've got projects to show. It makes you a better candidate. Um, the other piece of advice I like to tell people is if there are companies out there that have, um, hey, Cold River, good to see you in chat. Um, if there are people who uh, or companies that have like an API or a library or a framework or a tool of some kind, build that into a project because it changes the narrative about how you apply for that job. Instead of just like, hi, I'm Ian and I've got these technical skills. You're like, hi, I'm Ian. I'm actually a user of yours or I'm a customer of yours. I've been using this for a couple of weeks now. I've built it into a couple of projects. I found some things that I really, really love about this. In fact, I like it so much, I wanna come work for you and be part of this experience for other people. It totally changes that introduction for applying for that job and writing that cover letter instead of just, hi, I'm Ian and I've got the technical skills to fill this role that you have open. You're like, I happen to have those technical skills, but I'm also a user of yours and I like it so much, I wanna be part of the team. When I worked at SendGrid, we hired probably 20 or 30 engineers who came from companies that used SendGrid and that was a lot of their introduction. It was like, we use SendGrid and I loved it so much. And I got to interact with the customer service folks and the account management folks. Like it's just, it's a great company and I wanna come work there. It got to the point where we got cease and desist letters from companies saying, please stop hiring our employees. And it's like, it's not our fault you suck. I mean, it's not our fault that we're a great company. Uh, and, and you know, we're like, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop hiring your employees. And then like more of them applied and we hired them too. And they sent a second cease and desist letter saying, no, seriously, we'd like you to stop now. And so we're like, all right, fine. So we're not, and so they had to send out like a company-wide bulletin of like, all right, if anybody sees resumes with this company as like their most current job, like unfortunately we have to decline them and we can't, we can't talk to them. Even though we're able to prove like, hey, we're not poaching your employees. They're coming to us. Like that's how great we are as a company. They're coming to us. Um, and it didn't make any difference. So they still threatened to sue us. It's like, all right, fine, we'll stop. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get into that story with Josh on Thursday, because Josh and I both worked at SendGrid uh, during that time. And we're not allowed to name the company. So I don't know whether he'll be able to talk about that or not, but it'll be, it'll be an interesting topic if it does come up. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty fun. Um, Trash Dev says, I like to do talks at meetups. Good way to get your name out there. Absolutely. Especially when you're new, go give like a five minute lightning talk on my experience with fill in the blank. You're not saying like, this is how to build a component in React or this is how to do this thing in Python. You're not telling people how to do something. You're just giving a talk on this was my experience with how to do, how I did something. Nobody can argue with experience. But if you get up and say, this is how it should be done, you're gonna get 100 people yelling at you why you're wrong. But if you get up and just give a talk of like, this is how I built out this thing. At best, or even, sorry, I should say at worst, you're gonna get people coming up to you going, cool, good job. Did you know you could also do this and this and this? And you're gonna get like a ton of other ideas and you're gonna get to network with people. The important thing about going to meetups is they are called meetups, not show ups. You have to actually go with the intention to meet people. Um, and I tell people that all the time. They're called meetups, not show ups. Uh, Ned Fraser from South Florida. Good to see you in chat. Hello, hello. Good to see uh, first time chatters going on. Good deal. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Uh, chatted a little bit about a 3D printed uh, giveaway that I'm doing. I got a whole bunch of these really cool dragon models 
um, that I'm giving away. And so it's like I've got a bunch of like these really shiny filaments and some of them that are like color transition filaments. And I've got one of them here somewhere that actually changes color based on temperature. Um, and it'll change from dark green to kind of a pink peachy rose color to bright yellow, depending on how warm it gets. Um, but I've also got like rainbow filament kind of things uh, like these. Um, so lots of really cool effects going on with, uh, with some rainbow filaments. Now that that other one finished, I want to go grab that one because this one's going to look really, really cool too. Um, but it's going to take me a minute to, uh, to get off the print bed. So don't go away. I'll be right back. Uh, at Fraser, hope you had a good Thanksgiving as well. Um, I'm still eating leftover turkey. Leftover turkey for days. My kids went through and they're like, mmm, stuffing. And they like ate all the stuffing and most of the mashed potatoes. And now all we have left is like 10 pounds of turkey and like a vat of gravy. And it's like, what are we going to do with all this now? So it's like turkey soup for days and then we're going to freeze the rest. But I'll be right back. All right, so this one is a really cool dark blue, and and you can't you can't tell. Well, you can kind of tell. You can see on the spikes on the top. There's a bit of a sparkle in there. So this one's this one's actually got like a really faint sparkle. You can see a little bit on the on the leg up here as well. Um, and so this one I will put in the giveaway. This one is hella cool. Um, I need to hit it with a hair dryer though. Cause sometimes in 3D printing you get all this little wispy stuff going on. And you just blast it with a hairdryer and it all just melt away. Um, so I got to do a little bit of post-processing on this one. Also, one of the legs here is kind of kind of fuzzy as well. But you just you can you can pull most of it away, but then you just hit the rest of it with like a hairdryer or a heat gun, and it just melts the rest of that away. Um, and so this blue dragon will also be in the giveaway. I will I will add that to the list. Um, but yeah, the uh, the the bronze brown charcoal one uh, that I showed earlier. That one I'm not giving away. That one's my favorite. Uh, I'm going to give all the rest of these away. Uh, let's see what else is going on in chat. Um, start a new security DevOps role. Sweet. DevSecOps is a great, like, amazing place to be in tech right now. Um, that's, that's, like, someone asked me probably four or five years ago. They're like, what's a job that's going to have, like, job security for the foreseeable future? And I'm like automation and like DevOps security because DevOps is never going away. Security is always going to be a problem, but automating things is going to be like a huge thing. And like, how do we automate it? Whether it's through like AI and machine learning or just, you know, those of us doing things manually and then figuring out how do I automate the mundane? Um, those are going to be uh, really big things. Uh, Larry's not Bob. Thanks for the follow, by the way. I missed that earlier. Um, those are going to be like three big areas that are never going to go away. And the fact that they're kind of combining dev ops and security ops and calling it like dev sec ops is actually a really interesting sort of intersect uh, between those roles. Like how do we deploy these things, but how do we also ensure the security, especially with data pipelining and, and things like that and uh, encryption at rest, all that kind of stuff. So that's very cool. I'd love to hear more about uh, uh, like what that job is, is entailing and so on. Um, just accept an offer for SRE DevOps. Sweet, everybody getting jobs. See, told you, people are hiring right now. Like a lot of people think like, oh, it's December, like no one's gonna hire. It's like, no, people are still hiring. Um, you can you can absolutely find uh, find jobs these days. So cool to uh, cool to see. Um, transition from ITQA and loving it. Yeah, and I have that I have that chat uh, X99 or X90. Good to see you. Um, I have that chat on the on the stream from time to time too. That um, no matter what job you get when you start out, so NetFraser, this would be this would be good advice for you. So whatever that first job is, that you're going to go get. Or sorry, NetFraser just got the job. Uh, it was a Taiwanese name um, that's trying to find the job. Whatever that first job is, doesn't have to be your dream job. It's a stepping stone. It's the it's your entry point into a tech job. Technology as an industry 
is a giant choose your own adventure kind of storybook. You get to choose where you're going from step to step. So whatever that first job is, you don't have to stay doing that kind of work forever. Like Ned Fraser started in a QA role and got out of QA and is now doing something else. You don't have to stay in a role. And so there is a bit of a stigma of like, oh, you got a QA job, like you're, you're only ever gonna do QA. Um, or, oh, you got into like customer support, that's all you're ever gonna do is customer support. No, it's not true. You get, you get to control that narrative. You get to control the story of how you present yourself on the resume and the cover letter and your interview as far as like, yeah, that was what I used to do. This is what I am now. This is where I'm taking my career. They can't argue with that. And if they try to say, well, you know, we'd really like to hire you as also doing QA, be like, no, that's not what I want to do. I'm here for a software developer job. Like it made me a better developer. That's basically the story that you have to tell is like how did doing that other role make you a better developer so that you can get a developer job. So QA, you now know how all of these different systems interact and how like, you know, automating testing works and how making a change over here has this ripple effect and how just because these tests pass doesn't mean it's gonna break something over here. You can have that conversation as the interview and go, I did a year in QA and it's gonna make me such a better developer now. This is why now I'm transitioning into a developer because it, it's gonna make me a lot more confident in how I do my job. Same thing with customer support. I wanted to see things from the user's perspective. I wanted to really feel the empathy of what the user's going through using this product, using this software. And now that's gonna make me a better developer because as a, as a developer now, I have a better perspective from the user's per side of things as to how my work is gonna impact them. So it's all about how you tell that story. You don't have to just say like, yeah, I used to do customer service and I didn't like it. And so I want to be a developer. Tell them why that skill is going to make you a better developer and how that's bringing something to the company. It's going to completely win them over. It's all about how you tell that story. Uh, Cold River says it doesn't sound like there are very many entry level DevOps roles. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like they'll teach you a lot and bring you along. Yeah, for sure. Um, DevOps is one of those kind of uh, parts of our industry where you really do have to have some experience before they'll hire you. There are companies that will take a chance. Uh, the, the software school here in Denver that I taught at for four years, we actually had one of our front end students leave and get a DevOps job. Um, and you can find that video on, uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, her name is Alyssa. And I did, a, I did a panel a couple of weeks ago where it was uh, QA, DevOps, sales engineering, and data science or yeah, data science and how they went to school to learn how to be software developers, but then they got into these other roles that weren't a hundred percent software development. And, and some of them have then moved on and, and uh, transitioned into other kinds of roles where they are doing more coding. And so it was a lot of conversation about, well, how did that happen? What was that interview process? How did you get that job? What did you learn on the job? And then how did you tell the story to get out of that job to go do something else? Um, and so it's about an hour, hour and a half long if you want to go watch that. Um, and you'll get four different perspectives on, on those kinds of things. For Alyssa, she went to a meetup. I encouraged her, like, go to a meetup, meet people. And she did. She went to a meetup, she met people, and she's like, yeah, I'm kind of curious about DevOps. And they're like, yeah, we'll hire you. And she's like, really? And she went through the interview process and got the job. Um, I mean, at that point, it's up to you to actually pass the, the technical side of it. But they just, they saw the passion and the drive that she had. And her background was like, yeah, it's a perfect fit. Like, let's get you in the interview pipeline. So going to meetups and networking is really going to make it a lot easier to get that first job in, in tech, for sure. Uh, Ned Fraser says, yeah, I use the knowledge I got from QA and all the security training on the side. Open the door for this role. Yeah, it's all how you tell that story. So whatever job you're in, whatever job you're going to, you just have to talk about like, yeah, all the stuff that I did in the, in the past. This is how, like, this is what I'm bringing to the company and how I'm going to make your company better. That's really what you're selling them on in that interview. It's not just, I have this skill, I have this skill, I have this skill. You're telling them, I have this skill, which is going to improve this for your company. I have this skill and I have this background and experience, and that's going to improve this for your company. You need to tell them why they're going to be a better company if they hire you, is really the story that you have to tell there. Um... Old River says, I only used a computer for Google and social media before Turing. Oh, you went to Turing. Sweet. I taught there. Um, Cold River, were you one of my students by chance? I don't recognize you by your username. Sorry about that. Um, X, the best product owners I've worked with came from customer support. Yeah, exactly. Because they, they understand uh, like the customer perspective uh, for sure. You are one of my students. DM me and tell me who you are. 
I'm, I'm kind of curious who you are. Um, I left right before you did mod three. So I would have had you in mod one, right? So I did, my last two uh, sessions at Turing were mod one. So you were in my first mod one, you progressed to mod two, and then I left as you were going to mod three. Cool. Um, DG776, interview went really well. They're just looking over my references. Hopefully I got the job. Sweet, if they're calling your references, that's a really good sign. Um, for me, being a hiring manager, calling references is one of the silliest things in tech. It's like, could you give me a list of names of people that are going to say amazing things about you? What's the point of doing a reference call? Like, if you made it through the tech interview process, like, what am I going to learn from a reference call that I couldn't learn from you during the interview process? Like, it was so extremely rare that me doing a reference call on anybody turned up anything new. And I never once turned down somebody and rescinded an offer because of something that their reference told me. Like, what's the point? Like, literally, there's no point to doing reference calls. Um, the only thing that I would really do on a reference call is ask, would you ever hire this person back? Um, because it's a way of skirting around a law where I'm not allowed to ask if you got fired or if you resigned or if you got let off, like laid off or let go. I'm not allowed to ask why you left. But if I ask, would you ever hire them back? If they say no, then I know you left on bad terms. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should think twice or maybe watch their behavior a little bit more. Um, but if they're like, oh yeah, we would absolutely hire them back. It's like, cool, you left on good terms. You left for good reasons. Everybody liked you. And so that's just, you know, it's a way of like skirting the law. There are a lot of questions we can ask on reference calls, but some companies won't answer those kinds of questions. All they'll confirm is like, you worked from this date to this date and this was your title and that's all we can tell you. And that's fine too. Um, but if you give personal references, you may want to coach them on like, Hey, if Ian calls you for that reference, talk about these things, uh, or like highlight these things, or, you know, don't talk about that project that we did. That was like a dumpster fire. Um, like coach your friends on like what you want them to talk about during a reference call. I'll we'll give you that little, uh, that little cheat. Um, let me just scroll back up and chat here a little bit. Meetups are great. Even the virtual ones. Yeah, for sure. It's all about meeting people. Um, I haven't had companies actually ask for references until recently. I've, I've had reference calls on just about every, I'll qualify that. I've had reference checks on every job where I applied and had to go through a regular sort of interview process. My last several jobs I got just from networking, knowing people and having a conversation and that turned into a job offer. Um, so when I left SendGrid, I went to work for, uh, another startup who went through the Techstars, uh, sort of, um, uh, like boot camp kind of thing. And uh, they were well established as a company and they were looking for a Python developer. And so I went to meet their director of engineering and their director of engineering is like, by the way, just for transparency, I'm actually leaving the company. And I'm like, well, who's gonna manage the team? And they're like, we don't know yet. And I'm like, I have management background. Do you want me to come manage the team? And they're like, all right. I'm like, okay, well, you want me to come like do the interview? They're like, no. I'm like, really? And they're like, dude, you worked at SendGrid for four years. If you were incompetent, they would have fired you. So we'll just bring you on. I'm like, sweet. Okay, so that was just conversation turned into a job. Um, I went from there to Stream, uh, which is another Techstars startup. And I knew, like I knew so, well, someone that worked there, I worked with at SendGrid previously. And so he like made it really easy for me to get that job. I still had to do a bit of a tech interview, but they, I don't think they called any references. And then uh, from there, I went to teach at Turing. And that I had already been mentoring for them for three years. And they're like, you just want a job here? I'm like, sure. So that turned into a job. And then when I left Turing, I called Stream. I'm like, hey, you want me back? They're like, yeah, all right. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's all about who you know. It really, really makes a big, big difference. Um, cool. Let's, uh, let's catch up on chat. Um, let's see. What else do we say? Had Mike, Megan, and Bob. And, oh, Robert. Okay, Robert. Like Bob Goo. Okay, cool. Um, oh, so we totally crossed paths then. If you got out of mod one with Bob, I went down to mod one, I think as Bob left mod, mod one. Um, DG says they're really strict with references. You'd think they were Google or something. Yeah. Um, my employer is doing reference checks starting tomorrow too. I got to go get fingerprinted. Yeah. Especially for security type roles, like having, having strong, like, background security clearance anything like that will really really help so if you have any kind of like security clearance or top secret clearance anything like that or if you can qualify for that 
that'll actually win over a lot of folks too, depending on the, on the type of role. Um, but doing any kind of security training these days looks really good on a resume, no matter what kind of role you're in. If you've got some kind of security and you can talk to like, you know, and by the way, I also know how to like really keep things nailed down and locked down and private and encrypted and all that stuff. Um, that really goes a long way with a lot of places for sure. Yeah, they did a lot of shuffling of, of folks at Turing. I mean, not, not frequently. I mean, we would stay on a module for like several modules, but I think Bob only went down to mod one for one inning. Um, and then I think they moved them. Uh, did they move them over to the front end program after that? I forget. Um, or they, they moved them back to another module and then I think he ended up leaving the, leaving the school and uh, going to get a job. He went to mod four, okay. I really liked teaching Mod 4. That was a lot of fun. It was mostly just career development stuff at that point and just helping students get jobs um, and less about the, the technical side of things. But it was fun, like, just rolling up my sleeves and, like, helping students with their projects in, in the fourth module, too. Some of the some of the project ideas there were pretty great. Um, cool. Well, this has, been, uh, this has been a fun chat. I didn't even get to any of my regular Q&A, so this is fantastic. I love just interacting with chat. Um, but yeah, folks submit questions to me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, and so I'm Ian Douglas 736 on LinkedIn and Twitter. Feel free to connect, follow, send me questions. If you've got questions, um, I like to answer them anonymously on the stream. And so I'll say like, Hey, next question. I don't say who you were, but if you ask in chat then I'll be like, Hey, DG asked the following question. Cause people are going to see it scrolling on the screen anyway. Um, and so it's not really like a, a secret thing, but if you don't want your name attached, um, you can send me a message on LinkedIn or you can send me a direct message on Twitter. My DMs are always open on Twitter. Um, and you can just say like, hey, I got a question for your stream sometime. You can just drop that question in and I'll do like a little bit of research and a bit of prep. Um, if you're in chat, you can kind of catch me off guard sometimes and like ask me something where I'm like, oh, I got to think about that for, for a moment. Um, but I love interacting. I love just sharing my ideas and perspectives. But again, I don't want to just be another white dude on the internet with opinions either. So I love having people on the stream. This Thursday, I'm going to have another white dude in tech, uh, Josh. Uh, he's, a, he's a buddy that I worked with at, at SendGrid for four years who was head of HR. And so all we're doing are resume reviews. So send me a resume. Um, you can send it to techinterview.guide. Oops, helps if I'm typing in the right window. Techinterview.guide slash streaming. You can upload a resume on here. Uh, just anonymize it. Anonymize like your name, your email, your phone number. Um, and we won't like click on links or anything, but if you want a free resume review from my perspective, um, I am looking for a handful of resumes for Thursday because that's all Thursday stream is going to be is resume reviews and giving away all these 3D print dragons uh, and little horse figurines and stuff like that. Um, so we'll be doing giveaways kind of throughout the, uh, the night as well. Um, oh, you got that interview at Target. Dude, that's awesome. They're sending a three to five day project I have to work on and then do an assessment. Dude, that's amazing. Good for you. Um, what I would do is, um, if it's not already a Git repo, do a Git init and start committing your work as though you were doing a regular Git workflow. And then make sure you send that as part of the project back to them as far as like, so that they can see that commit history. Um, that shows them a lot about what your workflow was like and how long things actually took and like where you maybe got stuck on things. It'll show a whole lot more about your development process because that's also what the interview is about and, and par partially what this take home assignment is meant to show them. It's not just, can you build the feature, but they want to know like how you made your decisions. So document as much as possible. Um, as soon as they send it to you, look over it send them like as soon as you can send them back a list of clarifying questions and make sure you really understand what it is they want you to build do that sooner than later don't wait to the very end and say oh by the way i had this question because it's kind of too late at that point um ask them the questions as soon as possible and then if they don't answer the questions then you want to write up a readme file in that git repo where you document the assumptions that you made and said hey i had the following question and um you know i wanted to make some progress on the project. And so I just went ahead and I made this assumption on my own. And this was the consequence of that. Like this is what happened because I made that choice. Document all of that stuff in a readme file so they can see that when you hand it in. Again, they're, they're going to really care about your process, your communication, how you made your decisions, how you did your problem solving. And if you can document that as you go, especially with Git commits, it's saving them a lot of headache because they can look at that and it's gonna like wow them uh, that you're doing that. Um, and so do that. And um, I have had people in the past, as they do a take-home assignment, 
um, actually like check in with them every day as if they're doing a stand-up and say, this is what I accomplished, this is what I'm doing next. This is what I've accomplished, this is what I'm doing next. Because the interview process is also showing them what you're gonna be like as an employee. And so if you can follow that process and be like, this is what I'm gonna be like if you hire me, um, then they're, they're gonna know exactly what they're getting. It's not gonna be a surprise for them when they hire you. Um, and I actually coached a guy who was trying to get a job in Ireland. He was one of my students at Turing. And he's like, I, I really wanna win this company over. And I'm, I'm like, well, it's kind of perfect that they're like way offset as far as time zone goes because he was working during the day and like trying to work on stuff. And then he wanted to do the project in the evening. And I'm like, well, that actually works out great. So work on that project. And then when you're finished at, at night, send them an email and say, this is what I accomplished. Here's my latest work and send that to them. By the time they get it, or, or by the time you go to bed, they're just waking up for the day. And the first thing they're gonna see in their inbox is this update from you. They're gonna go over that. They can give you some feedback so that when you get up the next day, you can act on that feedback. And so he did that through probably a week's worth of work. And they're like, all right, we're just gonna hire you. And we don't know how we're gonna work out the visa thing yet, but you're the first candidate that we ever had who communicated so well about what they were working on and, and where they were getting stuck and asking questions along the way, just like they would in a stand-up meeting if they got stuck on something and they needed help from the team. And they're like, this was amazing. And so they made him an offer and they're like, we're gonna figure out the work visa somehow. And it took, I think, two months or something to get the work visa straightened out and he moved over to Ireland and, and got a job and, and he did great over there, so. Um, Just reading over over chat. Um, don't have your friend do the assignment for you. Yeah, um, so that actually happened to me too uh, for anybody still hanging out in chat. So when I was working at SendGrid, I gave somebody a take-home assignment. They had their friend write it. And when they submitted, I'm like, oh, okay, this code's pretty good. And I brought them in for, for the actual on-site. They didn't know that my on-site process though had them work on that code, like continue to work on that code to like build in a feature or fix bugs. Um, where they got to choose, do you want to fix bugs or do you want to add new features? Because that also tells me about you as a developer. Do you only do new shiny stuff or are you willing to go back and, and get back in the trenches? Well, he didn't know how to do either because he didn't write the code. Um, and he eventually admitted that his friend wrote the code. And I'm like, all right, dude, the interview's over. Like, what were you hoping to accomplish here? <laughs> so I wrote this whole thing up on Quora.com and like the number one question that I got, because uh, I, I had like lots and lots of response on that. Uh, the number one question that I got was like, did you hire his friend? It's like, no, I didn't hire his friend. He was obviously in on it. Um, anyway, cool. We're well, good to uh, hang out with folks. I think I'm going to wrap up here. I've been going for about an hour and a half and I got a bunch of stuff to do tonight to uh, prep for tomorrow. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up, but thanks for hanging out. Um, let's see, is there anybody we can raid? Um, Chris Perillo's online. We can go raid Chris. Oh, thanks for the follow. Just had another follow come in. Silent Bite, good to have you uh, hanging out. So yeah, come back on Thursday. So send me, uh, send me a resume. Uh, you get the link in chat. Send me a resume for the resume review on Thursday and I'll be doing the, the giveaway on those dragons. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Is anybody, uh, no, Chris Perillo is not a chess player. He, uh, he works at Intel. Uh, really cool dude, he's really into 3D printing and stuff. Um, I think we'll go raid Chris. So let me go get that set up and then uh, we'll call it for the night. And uh, yeah, come back on Thursday. So same time Thursday night, 7 p.m. Mountain. It'll be 6 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Or sorry, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. I'll be doing the giveaway in between resume reviews, but I really need some resumes. Um, so send me, send me in some resumes and we'll see you all on Thursday. Have a good night. Thanks for hanging out and chatting.